Well, hey everyone, hope you're doing well. We are in Proverbs chapter 3, and so far we looked at the first six verses of Proverbs 3, and today we're going to go over Proverbs chapter 3, verse 7 to 18. 7 to 18. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 7 says, Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Wise in your own eyes. Eyes. Romans 12, 16 talks about not setting your eyes on high things. What does that mean? Well, don't associate with those, don't associate with those who are prideful, with those who try to elevate themselves, those who boast in themselves. Associate with the humble. That's what he's saying. Associate with the humble. It also says, do not be wise in your own opinion, or that's what it means. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. And this is speaking of reverentially regarding God's law. Having reverence for it, looking to it, following it, being in line with it. I love it. In verse 8, Proverbs 3 says, It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Our conduct, when in line with God's ways, will be, will be, nourishment to our health. And I'm talking about spiritual. I'm even talking about physically. If you look at the statistics on uh, stress, what stress actually does in a person's life, it messes people up. Stress is not a good thing. Stress is a killer, actually. Um, So if we walk in wisdom, which is walking in God's ways, then we're going to be walking rightly and we're going to be healthy and nourished spiritually and physically. It goes on in verse 9 and 10. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the fruits, uh, I'm sorry, with the first fruits of all your increase. Verse 10. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Wow. So all we have and possess is from God. It's from the Lord. Right? Don't let what you possess consume you. Don't let what you possess possess you. Don't be all about what you have. Be all about the one who has given you all that you have. Hold everything with open hands. I always like to tell my congregation that. Hold everything with open hands. Don't have an iron grip on all your possessions, on all that you have. Because it's all God. It's all from God. And it's all for God. And what it's talking about really here is, is giving, is tithing. You know, God doesn't desire our leftovers. That's something I, I didn't know when I was a new believer. It took me some years to learn that. God doesn't desire our leftovers. He wants our first fruits. Not because he needs it. Not because he's like, I need more money. I need more stuff. And of course not. But it's an act of worship. Giving to God is an act of worship. And it blesses God because we are saying, you know, with a heart of surrender, Lord, I'm here. Here I am. I yield to you. This is all yours anyway. Proverbs 11.25 says, The generous soul will be made rich. I love that. The generous soul will be made rich. We don't give to get, right? We don't give to get. We get to give, right? We get from God, and then we give it out. Don't give... God ultimatums either. I've heard people do this. You know, maybe I've been guilty of it over the years too. Lord, if you bless me with this, if you just bless me with this one thing, I'll give you that. I will give you a tithe and an offering. There's different, there's a tithe offering and and, um, alms. Okay, a tithe means 10%, right? That's the definition of what the word tithe means. 10% offering is anything above 10%. Uh, Alms is giving to those who are poor and in need. But we sometimes give God ultimatums, like, God, if you do this, then I'll give you that. Instead, it's like, instead, God, I will give you my first fruits because it's an act of worship because you are my God. The right heart is saying, Lord, I'm giving you this joyfully because it's all yours anyway. I'm just giving a little bit back to you. It's all yours, but I'm giving you just a portion back to you. But from my first fruits, not my leftovers. And then verse 10 which we read, your give, you, know, you give freely to God and he will bless you like crazy. As you give to God, he will bless you like crazy. 
You cannot outgive the Lord. And that's a fact. You can't outgive God. You can try. Not possible. So verse 11 and 12, Proverbs 3 says, My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor detest his correction. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects, just as a father, the son in whom he delights. So the Lord chastening and correcting us is a good thing. It's actually a good thing. Why? So he can awaken our souls to where we're compromising. So he can let us know where we're off where we're not in line with him. It's a good thing to be corrected by the Lord because we're convicted, then corrected, but then forgiven. We have to remember the end result. And then in verse 13, he goes on and says, happy is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding. Finds means reaches or obtains, okay, by seeking. Gain means drawing out. The idea is one who finds precious metal by digging, right? You dig for some precious metal and you find it. Dig into God's word and you'll gain wisdom. And that's really the point here. Verse 14 and 15, for her proceeds are better than the profits of silver and her grain or and her gain than fine gold. 15. She is more precious than rubies, talking about wisdom, she is more precious than uh, rubies, and all the things you may desire cannot compare with her. God's wisdom has true value, okay? And riches in this life. It's the treasure that we hold on to, that we live by, that we adhere to. Wherever your treasure is, there you're what? Your heart will be also. If your heart is on this earth in, you know, trying to build a kingdom here, that's where your treasures, that's where your heart is, that's where what you're consumed with. Money is not evil, but like the word says, the love of money, being consumed with it, being run and ruled by it. Wherever your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And remember, this is, these are words of Jesus that remind us to store up our treasures in heaven, not on this earth. So we go on in verse 16 and 17. Length of days is in her right hand, in her left hand riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness and her paths are peace. Verse 16 and 17. Generally, God's wisdom brings the best blessings. That's really the summation of that. And then verse 18. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her and happy are all who remain, I'm sorry, and happy are all who retain her. Okay, so wisdom is uh, allegorized as a tree um, of life whose fruit preserves life and gives us all that makes life a blessing. So wisdom is characterized as a her, and it's really this whole thing, this whole portion of scripture is like, As we seek God's wisdom and live out God's wisdom, guess what? It's going to be a blessing. We're going to be a blessed, or we're going to be blessed for it. So seek his wisdom. Follow his ways. Do what he is calling you to do. Adhere to his truth in his word, because this is where true wisdom lies. So that was Proverbs chapter 3, verse 7. Uh, 7 to um, 18. So God bless you guys. Have an awesome day.